We're now going to look at an example of exponential growth and decay in relation to temperatures of objects that are either cooling or heating in some environment. This is known as Newton's Law of Cooling and Heating. Uh, again, the idea behind these examples is that Mother Nature is communicating to us through differential equations. So the idea is to try to in interpret a physical phenomena as a differential equation and then see if we can solve that differential equation to come up with a function that then uh, describes the behavior of that phenomenon. So in this case, we just think a little bit about what the change in temperature of an object may be when it's sitting in an environment. So if we have a, an object, uh, which is maybe a warm object that's being cut, put in cooler surroundings, uh, what should we expect to happen to the temperature? Well, we would expect the temperature sh to drop to um, a warm object, should start to cool off if it's in a cooler environment. How fast should it cool? Well, maybe we start to think that if the warm object is really hot in relation to the environment, so there's a big temperature difference, a really hot object in a really cold environment, there's a big temperature difference, we might expect that the temperature should start dropping rapidly. There should be a, a greater increase in the change of temperature. Whereas if the temperature of the object and the surroundings are pretty close to each other, we don't expect it there to be as rapid as of change in the temperature. This is essentially what Newton's Law of Cooling is saying. It says that the rate at which an object cools is proportional to the difference between the temperature and the surrounding temperature. And now interpreting this as a differential equation using, of course, derivatives, we get that if capital T is the temperature, then the rate of change in the temperature, how fast the temperature is changing, should be proportional, so that's K, this constant of proportionality, to the difference in the temperature, T, and the surrounding temperature, the, temp the ambient temperature. And that's this constant M. So capital T is the temperature of the object, capital M is the temperature of the surroundings, and K is some constant known as the cooling constant. It's this constant of proportionality. So this is a very natural way to think about what has to govern the behavior of a cooling object or, or a warming object. If you put a cold object in a warm environment, same thing. This differential equation then now models the behavior of the object, cooling or heating. Can we solve it explicitly? Can we come up with an explicit description now of this function t? We've got that the derivative of the temperature is a multiple of the temperature minus the surrounding temperature. Can we come up with an explicit description of t? And that's our goal here, is to try to figure out how to solve this. What's the solution? How can we write t is a function of t, uh, big T is a function of little t, explicitly. How do we do that? Well, let's look at an example, and part of our example will be to actually see how we can solve this equation. Now, maybe I should point out before we, we do a, an example that this differential equation is different than the one we've already studied. So the, the one we've already studied, let's back up just a little bit here. This differential equation, dy by dt equals k times y, so this says you're thinking of a function whose derivative is a multiple of itself. Ah, we got that. That solution is an exponential function. A function that has the property that its derivative is a multiple of itself is an exponential function, some constant times e to the kt. The differential equation that we're staring at now is not the derivative of the function is a constant times itself. It is the derivative of a function is a constant times itself minus this other constant m. So it's not the same. But maybe we can use the solution to that other differential equation to give us insight as to what the solution to this differential equation is. And that's the idea, is to build on previous known results. So let's look at an example. And we'll see how we can solve an equation like this. So in particular, we've got a cold drink taken out of a refrigerator. And we know its temperature at that time. 25 minutes later, we know its temperature has increased to 10 degrees. And we also know the temperature of the surroundings. It's 20 degrees Celsius in the room. What is the temperature of the drink after 50 minutes? So use the information we're given to try to predict the temperature later. And figure out when the temperature is going to be 15 degrees. So what do we know? Well, we're going to let 
we're going to start giving uh, our quantities names. So capital T of T is going to be the temperature. And this is measured in degrees Celsius of the drink at time t. And what's t measured in? t is going to be measured in minutes, since that's what we're working with in the question. What do we know about capital T? Well, we know a few things. We know t of 0. We're imagining that time t equals 0 is when it was taken out of the refrigerator, so that's going to be 5. We know the temperature 25 minutes later. That's going to be 10. We also know the ambient temperature of the room. So that's 20 degrees Celsius, so that's 20. What else do we know about T? Well, I guess you could say the most important thing we know about the temperature function is that it obeys Newton's law of cooling, so we know something about its derivative. We know from Newton's law of cooling that the derivative of big T with respect to little t is k times big T minus m. Okay, now we're going to go on a bit of a detour here. I'd like to figure out what the solution is to this equation. What function satisfies that? So let's go on a bit of a detour. I know that the derivative of a function equal to a multiple of itself, well the only function that satisfies that is the exponential function. I don't know what function has the property that when you differentiate it is a constant times itself minus m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to modify this equation and see if I can solve a modified version. So here I'm going to consider y equal to t minus m. So I'm considering this new function called y, and I'm just letting it be our temperature function minus m. What do we know about this? Well, we have that dy dt is equal to d big T with respect to little t minus the derivative of m with respect to t, but m is a constant, so it's minus 0, so I'm going to leave that off. y must satisfy, what does it satisfy? Well, we know capital T satisfies Newton's law of cooling, so what does y must satisfy? Well, dy by dt, well that's just d big T, d little t, as we've just observed. What's d big T with respect to little t? That's k times t minus m. What's t minus m? Oh, that's just y. That's what we called y. Well, what do you know? The derivative of y with respect to t is k times y. We know a solution to that equation. We know a function whose derivative is a multiple of itself. We know that it has to be y is equal to a e to the kt. Ah, so if y is equal to a e to the kt, then we know what t has to be because t, looking back at the relationship between y and t, t is y plus m, or m plus y. So t is m plus y. And there we go. We've managed to come up with the function, capital T, which satisfies this differential equation by using knowledge of the function which satisfies the exponential growth and decay equation. So this is important. I put it in purple here as a different color because this not only applies to this example, but all Newton's Law of uh, Cooling examples. We just found that any function, capital T, that satisfies Newton's Law of Cooling equation has to be of the form m plus a e to the kt. So that's so important. Let's go ahead and write it up here. Capital T of t must be of the form m plus a e to the kt, where m is the ambient temperature. And notice that a doesn't appear anywhere. a was our constant that came up from solving the corresponding uh, exponential growth and decay equation. What is it in this case? Well, we could try to figure out what it is. If I plugged time little t equals 0 in, I would get that the temperature is m plus a. Well, if m plus a is to be t naught, then a would be t naught minus m, where t naught is the initial temperature. So this a we could work out. It's just going to be the initial temperature minus m minus the ambient temperature.
OK, so what does this mean? Well, in the context of this, this example, we now got the function so we can continue on. In the context of other examples we do in Newton's Law of Cooling, we could just remember this result now. A solution to Newton's Law of Cooling equation has to be of the form m plus a e to the kt. But keep in mind, the way we found it was just using our result about exponential growth and decay equations. Derivative of a function is equal to a multiple of itself. That had to be an exponential function. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue on with this example. Now we know that t of t is m plus a e to the kt. We know that m is 20, a e to the kt. We have that t of 0. Now we want to figure out what these other variables are, a and k. t of 0, we could use the fact that we know a is, is the initial temperature minus the ambient, but let's I didn't work it out in great detail above. I just mentioned that was the case. I, I, we can work it out in detail here. T of 0 equals 5. So that means that 5 is equal to 20 plus A e to the 0. And so that means that A is equal to 5 minus 20. In other words, the initial temperature minus the surrounding temperature. So that agrees with what we had above. We've just done the calculation now to justify that. So that's negative 15. The other piece of information, t of 25 equals 10, that should allow us to solve for the other variable we need, and that's k. So t of 25 is equal to 10. So 10 is equal to 20 plus a e to the kt. a is negative 15, so that's negative 15. e to the k is what I'm trying to find. Time in this case is 25, so that's e to the 25k. That's an equation in k alone. We can now solve for it. Um, it's going to involve logarithms because the exponential function has the k in the exponent. So we're going to have to try to get access to that by using a logarithm. So this becomes negative 10 is equal to negative 15 e to the 25k. Or 10 fifteenths, which is the same as 2 thirds, is equal to e to the 25k. I uh, take logarithms of both sides and I can then solve for k. And so that becomes ln of 2 thirds is equal to 25k. Or in other words, k is equal to 1 25th ln of 2 thirds. So we've got our values of a and k. And so we know what our function is. Our temperature function now, modeling the, the, the temperature of the drink, is 20 minus 15 e to the kt. And rather than jam all of this expression for k, I'm just going to write it off to the side. 1 25th ln of 2 thirds. Now we've got our temperature function. We haven't even answered part a and b yet of the question, if you notice. Go back up to the question. What is the temperature of the drink after 15 minutes? When, is it, when will it be 15 degrees Celsius? We haven't answered those parts yet. All our work so far has been coming up with the description of this temperature function. So now we can go ahead and answer those questions. What's the temperature after 50 minutes? That means we want to know t of 50, so that's 20 minus 15 e to the 50 times k. Well, 50 over 25 is 2, so that becomes a 2 ln of 2 thirds, which is 20 minus 15 of the 2 can, using properties of logs, can go up uh, as the exponent on the 2 thirds, so that becomes 4 ninths, e to the ln of 4 ninths. The e and the ln will cancel off, they're inverses to each other. So this becomes 4 ninths. 15 times 4 over 9, that's 20 minus one of the 3's and the 9, cancels with one of the 3's and the 5. That gives me 20 thirds, which is 40 thirds, or approximately 13.3 degrees Celsius. So after 50 minutes, the temperature of the drink is about 13, just a little over 13 degrees Celsius. When will the temperature be, well, what was the question asking, 15 degrees? When will its temperature be 15 degrees? So that was part A. Part B, well, we want to know when is 15 equal to t of little t. When is 15 equal to 20 minus 15 e to the kt? In other words, when is 5 equal to 15 e to the kt. 
So one third is to be equal to e to the kt. We're trying to solve for time here. k is known. It's, I just didn't write it out. It's this expression involving the logarithm. Uh, what's, ca what's little t? You can take the logarithm of both sides. ln of one third is equal to kt. So t is equal to 1 over k ln of 1 third. 1 over k, so the reciprocal of k would be 25 over ln of 2 thirds times ln of 1 third. And that is approximately 67 minutes. So it takes about 67 minutes for the temperature to get to 15 degrees Celsius.